ISO 27001 and XA 5.29, information security during a disruption. So what we're going to look at here is actually we've got two annexes on the bounce that are going to look at business continuity and disaster recovery. A little bit of an introduction to this. So the 27001 standard has moved in its 2022 update to bring in other standards under its umbrella. It didn't need to do it, but it has done it. In this particular instance, what it's taking from is a business continuity standard. I reference it because you should do some research on it. And the toolkit that I provide you, the templates that I provide you are based on it. And these clauses are taken directly from it. The business continuity standard is an ISO standard in its own right. It's ISO 27001. It isn't. It's ISO 22301. ISO 22301. I just say 27001 so many times, right? <laughs> My brain doesn't even, <laughs> it doesn't even think. So business continuity, ISO 27000, <clears throat> ISO 22301. So what that's looking at is how you manage business continuity and disaster recovery. This particular clause is looking specifically here at information security during a disruption, right? During an outage, during an event. This is kind of what 27001 used to look at. It didn't actually in the olden days need you to have order business continuity, now it does. But what it's specifically looking at is when you are in a disruption, what information security do you have in place? Let's have a little look at what the standard says. The organization should plan how to maintain information security at an appropriate level during a disruption. So that's the guidance, right? What it knows is that when you have a disruption, all bets are off. So as part of business continuity planning, anything can happen, right? I mean, any anything it, uh, that's going to impact you and it's going to have an outage. Information security is the confidentiality, integrity and availability of data. This specifically is an attack on the availability of data. When systems, processes and data aren't available, we enter into business continuity, disaster recovery. What are the security arrangements that we have in there? Some of the security arrangements are going to be no brainers, right? I want to give you an example. Think of an example where when a building um, goes into a fire alarm, right? So you are entering an incident of a fire alarm. All of the doors of that building will fail open, right? They have to. It's health and safety. It's the law. It's preservation of life, right? So the same may happen within your services, within your products, within your data systems that in the event of a disaster, everything fails open. What you have to do is you have to identify what is the minimum level of information security that you require during a disruption, during an outage, and then make sure that that is in place. So this is relatively straightforward. It forms part of business continuity planning. Within the ISO 27001 toolkit, I give you a complete business continuity toolkit for free. I throw that in there, right? The entirety of 22301, I'm giving you that, all of the things that you need. But here what you need to do is you need to have a business continuity plan. You have to have disaster recovery plans. Now, I'm not going to give you the difference here. We're going to talk about that further down the line. And there is a difference between business continuity and disaster recovery. Um, you're going to have those plans in place. And in those plans, you will have identified and documented what your information security requirements are. So is it the case that everybody has access to everything? Is it a case that only a subset of users have access to certain things? What are the information security requirements that you have that you are going to implement when that event occurs? So you're including that in uh, and how it differs from normal operation. What you're also going to do to satisfy this particular annex is you're going to test it. Now, testing of disaster recovery and business continuity, again, we're going to come on to, but know at this point that part of that testing is going to test the information security that you have when you enter into that failover, that disaster, that outage, whatever that may be, right? So again, I'm giving you guidance, right? It may be that you fire up an environment that doesn't have the same level of technical control. It may be that your failover environment doesn't have firewalls, doesn't have uh, wireless firewalls. It may be that your failover environment doesn't have antivirus to the same level. You know, there are many different things that can happen between a production environment and a failover environment technically and also physically and also with personnel. So you need to come consider what they are, document them, then you need to test them. 
right? So you are going to be testing that they are in place and operating as designed. The audit is going to look for that. They're going to look at your disaster recovery plans. Now, technical disaster recovery plans, they're going to look at whether or not you've referenced information security in there. They want to understand what those differences are. If I was going to give you a top tip, if I was going to give you a top tip, the easiest way to satisfy this is to say that the information security requirements and implementation is exactly the same, right? That's the easiest way to do it. Now, you might have to make reference to doors failing open in the event of a fire alarm, things like that. Um, four belts and braces, right? That should be implied. But the easiest way that I go about implementing it is saying, look, DR is exactly the same as production. It copies across all of the permissions, all of the technology, everything is exactly, is exactly the same. You're only really going to have a bureaucracy in terms of documentation when things differ because you've got to document what they differ and then you've got to test those differences. So have a little bit of a think about that. What we're looking at here is obviously continual improvement as well. So you're going to make sure that you're continually improving your information security in a disruptive environment, in your disaster recovery environment, uh, in your business continuity environment. You're going to be continually improving that as well. So part of the overall business continuity planning, part of the overall business continuity toolkit, have a look at ISO 22301, business continuity to understand a little bit more about it. But here, focus specifically on what is your information security in the event of a disruption. Ideally, it's the same as it is in production and it'll make this go swimmingly. I remain Stuart Barker. I am Stuart Barker. I am the ISO 27001 Ninja. These are a couple of Annex A controls specifically around that business continuity. So we're going to go on to the next one. But for now, peace out.